Hello. Um, in this mind map, we are going to be looking at prognostication of cancer. So what is prognosis? Well, essentially, this is a forecast of the outcome of the disease. So in other words, how serious or how severe it is. So the cancer either has a good prognosis or a poor prognosis. There are two main elements in determining prognosis. One, which is the most important one, is called staging or to stage the cancer. And the second main element is grading or to grade the cancer. Now for grading, this has to be done under microscopic examination by the pathologist. So let's look at stage first. Stage refers to the extent of the growth of the tumour, so how widespread it is. And uh, there are essentially three elements to determining extent. One is the local extent within the organ itself or whether it has gone to adjacent organs or structures. The regional extent, which refers to lymph nodes, and the distant extent, which refers to metastases. So we use the American Joint Committee on Cancer T&M staging system. This is pretty universally used. So the three elements, the T stands for tumour, and um, the very, very first earliest stage is TIS, or carcinoma in situ. Now please note that this um, in situ phase generally refers to epithelial malignancies, in other words, carcinomas. So what we mean when we say carcinoma in situ, um, it's defined by the fact that the basement membrane is intact. So this means that the tumour has not invaded beyond the original basement membrane of the epithelial cells, not gone into lamina propria, has not invaded lymphatics or blood vessels, and therefore has no metastatic potential. And this is very important because it means that if it is completely excised, the patient is cured. Now, beyond carcinoma in situ, we now have T1 to T4 stages. And how we determine this, uh, we look at several parameters, such as the size of the tumour, uh, the depth of invasion, especially in uh, organs like the gut, or the specific extent of local invasion, and also things like whether it has gone on to uh, invade into adjacent structures. So this uh, T1 to T4 staging is different for different organ sites and it's also different for different tumour types. For example, the staging for lymphoma system is quite different. It is not AJCC, but a different type of system. Now the N component is uh, referring to the lymph nodes. So this is the regional aspect of staging. And the scoring generally is N0 to N2 or N0 to N3, depending on the number of nodes that are involved. M, of course, refers to metastases. And M is very simple. It's either M0 or M1. So distant metast metastases like to the liver, to the lungs, to the brain. Okay, so um, when we combine the T stage, the N stage, and the M stage, we end up with uh, a stage within one to four categories to tell you what's the overall stage of the tumour. And this uh, staging determines very important uh, factors like uh, the type of treatment that the patient will receive, whether the patient requires chemotherapy, for example, and of course, the prognosis. Now, the second element is grading. So grading essentially refers to the degree of differentiation of the tumour. So it means that how closely the tumour resembles the tissue uh, of origin. So we have the low-grade tumours, and this is synonymous with well-differentiated tumours. So this is good, it is better, because these tumours closely resemble the tissue of origin. And here we have an example of um, a well-differentiated adenocarcinoma in the breast. So um, if you recall, adenocarcinoma refers to tumours, malignant tumours that are gland-forming. Um, you can see in this uh, picture here that uh, they're very nice, well-formed glands, such as here, so rounded, very easily identifiable as glandular lumina lined by malignant cells. So this is an example of a well-differentiated adenocarcinoma. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, uh, when we go up to looking at the high-grade tumours, high-grade is also synonymous with poorly differentiated and um, for these poorly differentiated tumours, they do not uh, form structures that closely resemble the tissue of origin. 
Instead, uh, they are actually very difficult to recognize on histology as being tumors that arise from that particular tissue. So they are hard to recognize. And I will also show you a picture of an example here. If we just look at this uh, in a high power first, we can see that this is a tumour that is not actually forming glands, but uh, is forming these large islands or sheets of cells. You cannot really recognise any gland uh, formation. And also, it looks very ugly. The nuclei are extremely pleomorphic. You can see a very large nucleus here. Next to it, there's a much smaller nucleus. So this is an example of a poorly differentiated carcinoma. In fact, this happens to be an adenocarcinoma, but it's almost um, not recognizable as such. Okay, So this is how we grade tumors. Now having looked at the importance of grading and staging, how do we actually do it? Well, uh, let's start off systematically again. Let's look at staging first. So how do we stage tumours? Essentially, it is by imaging in the live patient. Uh, it's very important. Um, now the radiologist comes into play. They look at CT scans, MRIs, sometimes even PET scans, which you will learn about later, to see with uh, uh, the naked eye the gross extent of the tumour. On pathologic examination, we can also look at it by examining grossly, for example, tumor size or whether some uh, adjacent organ is stuck on. And we can also examine those features microscopically. Now, in terms of grading, uh, this is always done by the pathologist and always done on microscopic examination because uh, we need to look at the actual tumor cells. And what we look at, first of all, at low power microscopy is to look at the architecture. Just as we saw in these pictures here, uh, the low power architecture to see if there's any gland formation, for example, in an adenocarcinoma, or is it uh, just large sheets and islands, as you can see in this particular tumour, in a poorly differentiated tumour. Then we look at the nuclei, uh, paying attention to features like nuclear pleomorphism, um, prominent nucleoli, bizarre looking nuclei. We also look at the mitosis, meaning that we painstakingly count the number of mitoses we see in a certain number of fields, and the higher that is, then the higher the grade. We also look at necrosis, knowing that aggressive and high-grade tumours tend to have more necrosis. Now, there are some other features that the pathologist will also examine uh, on microscopy, which are not specifically related to stage or grade. For example, lymphovascular invasion, as well as tumour margins. So tumour margins are important because if the margins are negative, it means that the tumour has been completely excised. So these elements are also important prognostically, uh, although they're not specifically part of staging or grading. So essentially, this is uh, what happens once a malignant diagnosis is made. All malignant tumours will have to undergo staging as well as grading in order to determine the prognosis of the cancer and also to determine the type and extent of treatment that the patient will require.